Hello there. I think we all know by now that Palpatine is a planner. In fact, he's probably won many, many awards for his planning abilities. Um, I did hear that before he was a senator for Naboo, he actually planned weddings on Naboo. Um, fun fact for you. Now, um, I happen to stumble across Palpatine's diary. And uh, in the front section, it has all of his elaborate plans, um, all just written out, just nicely, uh, lovely handwriting. He does have good handwriting, I, I will give him that. And obviously the back section is just like a normal diary. It's all his thoughts, his feelings, his emotions, you know, when he has a rough day, he puts it all in the diary, uh, you know, you know, one day he might have to kill someone, you know, he just doesn't, he just gets all of his emotion out into the diary, his, his secret feelings for Slymore, um, but that's for another video. In this video, we're gonna, we're gonna just look at his, uh, planning skills in episodes one, two, and three. Yes, yeah, so let's get into it. Palpatine's plans for the, what we know as the prequel trilogy, actually start a lot further back. You see, it is widely thought that Palpatine takes Maul as an apprentice, and that Maul was always actually intended to be Palpatine's apprentice until Maul tried to kill Palpatine to become the master. Now, in Palpatine's diary, it would it would say otherwise. You see, Palpatine knew that there was a Force-sensitive child on Tatooine, and we'll get on to how he manages to get that child back to Coruscant to train. But really, he knew that that was going to be his apprentice. That was the apprentice he wanted. But he also knew that, really, he needed a distraction. He needed someone that could avert attention from him onto this other person. And that's where Darth Maul came in. You see, he trained Darth Maul to be a menace, someone that could really, you know, get in the way of the Jedi, could could disrupt plans and change where they had their focus. And so he trained Darth Maul just to where he does in The Phantom Menace. You see, he knew that on Naboo, he would be cut in half. He knew that he would survive, and that, that he would then go on to become a crime boss. And we see later on, which we will get into later, that actually, that is very useful for Palpatine. But anyway, he causes a blockade of Naboo, you see. He causes this blockade, and many people think, okay, well, he, he, he initiates the blockade, so then he can... Uh, take the place of Chancellor Valorum, and you'd be correct. But he also puts the blockade there, because he knows that the Queen and some Jedi will escape from Naboo on a starfighter, but they, their hyperdrive will be damaged, and so they will have to uh, land on Tatooine, conveniently where his final apprentice will be, Darth Vader, also known as Anakin Skywalker. So he... From the very beginning, this was his way of getting Anakin back to Coruscant. He lets the Jedi take Anakin to Coruscant and train him. What's the per Why bother trying to train this child in secret when the Jedi will do it for you and you can just take him at the last minute? Less work and uh, much easier. Good planning, I would say. He knew about Anakin before Anakin was born. That that's incredible. This is this is all from the diary. You see. Um, and he knew that Qui-Gon would potentially throw a spanner in the works, so he planned that Maul would have would kill Qui-Gon, but then obviously Obi-Wan kills well, doesn't kill Maul, chops Maul in half, and uh, jobs are good and Phantom Menace, done. Now episode two is really where we start to appreciate the intricacy that is Palpatine's planning ability. He tells Dooku to hire Jango Fett to assassinate Padme, but he knows that Jango Fett won't do it himself. He knows that Jango will hire Zam Wessel, and Zam Wessel will fail to assassinate Padme. You see, Padme was always intended to be romantically involved with Anakin, because that was another draw to the dark side for Anakin. So Palpatine did not want Padme dead until the very end of what we know as episode 3. But this assassination attempt would mean that Zam would get caught by the Jedi, and then Jango would have to assassinate Zam before she could give away secrets about Jango. But Jango would use a Kamino and poison dart. But 
how did Palpatine know that the Jedi would be able to identify the Kamino and Blow Dart? Because, you know, Kamino had been deleted from the Jedi records. Well, that was so the Jedi didn't stumble across the clones too early. But, you see, Palpatine had put Dexter Jester in place. Uh, Dexter did not know this. Dexter's a nice guy. But Dexter was having a few visa problems. And uh, Palpatine did some uh, political, you know, pulled some political strings and, and got Dexter's um, visa sorted. Dexter doesn't know any of this. But he put him in a prime location so the Jedi would come to him for knowledge about the Outer Rim. And so, you know, he knew that the Jedi would then approach Dexter if there was a an item they needed to identify, in this case, a poison dart. That Jedi, whoever it was, in this case it was Obi-Wan, but this wasn't really in the plan. Palpatine didn't care which Jedi it was. That Jedi would then track down Jango, find the clones, and report to the Council. But then Jango would obviously run away to a more safe Separatist location, Geonosis, all part of the plan. The Jedi would follow Jango Fett to Geonosis and be captured, causing Anakin and Padme, who have now run off because of the assassination attempt to hide on Naboo, would then go and help on Geonosis. The Jedi would come and rescue. The plan was never to kill any of the... Uh, well, the plan was never to kill Padme or Anakin because they were quite useful to the plan. Anakin was basically one of the goals of the plan and Padme was one of the tools that was used to get to Anakin. Uh, the Jedi, Palpatine didn't really care which Jedi were killed at Geonosis, providing it wasn't Anakin, you see. All in the diary. Now, they're, they're in the arena, and uh, the clones and Yoda come along, and the Clone Wars is initiated. Another way to push Anakin further to the dark side. Another way to mar the image of the Jedi and make public relations between the Jedi and the, and the public worse. All part of Palpatine's plan, you see. Um, also, what happens? Uh, well, while everyone's away, uh, having a bit of a jolly on Geonosis and Kamino and Naboo, well, who's left in charge? That's right, Jar Jar Binks. All part of Palpatine's plan. We get Jar Jar Binks in in The Phantom Menace, get him to be a reasonably uh, big political figure for some reason, despite his very lacking knowledge of politics. He's left in charge, and then, oh, he's he gives... Uh, emergency powers to the Chancellor, which is Palpatine. All part of Palpatine's plan to gain more power over the Senate. I and so he then the has Senate. power over the Clone Wars, you see. Now, the other thing, the, the last part of this plan that we, we should look at is he pays off some, some Tuscans to kill Shmi Skywalker, another way to push Anakin further to the dark side. Now, I will just say that Palpatine has many, many other plans and intricacies that go on during the Clone Wars and between episodes 1 and 2 but we can't really look at them because I would like to get the video out before I'm 100 years old um, so for now that's episode 2 Now in episode 3 Palpatine's plans are a bit more transparent we can see through them a bit more but that's because it's kind of the culmination of all of his plans. Order 66, obvious we don't need to look at that any more detail um, you see Palpatine puts the images of Padme dying in childbirth in uh, Anakin's head to push him to the dark side. All part of Palpatine's plan. But let's look at the four people who are closest to Anakin. The people who would have tried to prevent him falling to the dark side. Obi-Wan, Padme, Rex and Ahsoka. Well, Padme was the reason he fell to the dark side. So we won't focus on her because Palpatine has already dealt with her. The other three, where are they? Well... Rex and Ahsoka are off dealing with, you guessed it, Maul. Maul, the plan that was Maul, is coming in just when Palpatine needs it. All part of the plan. There you go. And Obi-Wan goes off to fight Grievous, leaving Anakin exposed to the manipulation of Palpatine and no one to protect him from it. Anakin falls to the dark side and jobs are good and for Palpatine. Now, there's a few parts of the plan which maybe didn't go quite to the letter, uh, Palpatine did plan on uh, Yoda being confronted by a lot of clones when uh, they were having their fight, and Yoda would be would have been killed. Um, obviously, Yoda escapes, and so Palpatine's plan doesn't quite go to plan there. Um, Mace Windu, the plan was that Anakin would have come in earlier to help uh, Palpatine fight Mace Windu, but 
Anakin has problems with uh, timekeeping, and so, you know, he he came a bit late, and Palpatine was he wasn't worried, but he was he was a bit anxious that maybe the plan had gone a bit off. But Anakin came in just just at the important moment for Palpatine. And really, that's episode three. The plan, the plans in episode three aren't quite as intricate as episode two because it, episode two is the setup. Episode three is the execution, you see. And so Anakin is exposed. None of the people who he really cares about are around him and who care about him are around him. He's pushed to the dark side and by the end of it, you know, Palpatine has got what he wants. And when he gets what he wants, he has to get rid of the last thing that could draw... Anakin back to the light side and that's Padme so Padme's dead and that is episode three the plan may not seem as elaborate as the plans from episodes one or two but it's the culmination of the plans from episodes one and two Palpatine gets what he wants and unfortunately that's all there is in the diary you see Palpatine is so good at planning it takes up so much space in the diary but he's also a very emotional man uh, and so there's lots of emotions in the actual diary section of the diary. And so I don't have the diary for episodes 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And it's actually rumoured that he didn't actually continue to write the plans, which is where he kind of went downhill after episode 4 in his planning ability. Obviously he had contingency plans, but we don't really, I don't really know about them as I do about these plans because I don't have his diary. Um, and that's pretty much it. Uh, one thing he didn't plan on is Obi-Wan cutting Anakin's legs off, but... That's why you should always plan on Obi-Wan, because if there's a lesson we should learn from this video, it's always plan on Obi-Wan Kenobi. Thanks for watching the video. Obviously, it's not canon. I've probably put that all over the screen by now, uh, many times throughout the video, in fact. Um, but yes, not canon. I don't, in fact, own Palpatine's diary. But tell me what you think of Palpatine down in the comments. Tell me anything else yeah, you want to tell me in the comments within reason. Um, and remember to like the video. It's completely free. Subscribe to the channel. Also free. How generous of YouTube to give you two free things to do. Uh, not many things are free these days. Also, uh, click the recommended video, bottom left-hand corner. Also free. Wow. But uh, YouTube have gone to a lot of effort to get that video there for you. Um, it would support the channel. Uh, it would be, you know, showing, showing your appreciation to YouTube. It's just a good thing to do. Click that video. Click the subscribe button. Click the like button. Um, and thanks for watching. Bye.